what was it like? What's the audition process again? A, a show like The Daily Show, which has become iconic in the same way SNL is for a lot of comedians. The it's it's essentially so I auditioned. This was my second time auditioning. I auditioned back in 07 and shit the bed. And I realized what I did wrong was that I wasn't actively listening, which is part of acting and performance, is to pretend that you give a fuck about what other people in the scene are saying. Um so the Daily Show audition is pretty simple. You write a segment and then you perform a segment that their writers wrote for you. So essentially what we're looking for, can you bring other people's thoughts to life? And do you have the type of thoughts that are congruent with the type of comedy that we want to do on the show um, going forward? And that's a weird thing because Trevor's a new host. So everything that Jon Stewart's done, you can't even look at that because you can't assume that any of that type of pieces or ideology uh, is going to be on the show. So you write out a segment, you send that in. If they like it, then you get to the second audition, which is essentially being able to come in and perform that material with Trevor. And so that's what I did. You sit down in a chair. Trevor's right there three feet from you. And you play it as if it's an actual episode of the show. And so, you know, in that they're clocking performance and comedic timing on top of you being able to write the stuff. It's can you perform it? Because, you know, it's still a show. It's not just straight up stiff journalism. You got to be able to bring the jokes to life. And it just it was just one of those days where just fucking everything worked out, man. Fucking five for six with eight RBIs. Like just <laughs> one of those days where you walk out of the audition and you just know, even if I don't get it, I fucking did everything perfect. And that's all you can concern yourself with as a comedian, as an entertainer, period. Do your part. Everything else is out of your control. And that was that, man. Like, I was like, yeah, fuck y'all. I'm headed back to the airport. So I didn't even book a hotel. Like, I fucking landed at like 11 in the morning. My audition was at four and I was headed back to a seven o'clock fucking red eye to go back to the West coast and got the call on the way back to the fucking airport. That's awesome. And so that was that. That's some cool show business stuff right there. Yeah. You know, you know it doesn't always happen like that, but that was one where I was like, you know what? Yeah, that was a good fucking day. That what was, was your reaction? I had, um, I had Ryan Dempster, you know, former Chicago Cubs pitcher, Red Sox, Marlins. He was on my podcast about a month or so ago. And I asked him what was going through your head when you found out you got drafted by a major league baseball team. And I want to know what your reaction was because the daily show, that's a huge deal. So I think people are always fascinated. Like what goes through someone's head when they get this huge opportunity? Did you do like a little dance? You do a little fist pump, do a little no, shoulder dude. thing. What'd you, what'd you do? I sat in a corner and cowered in fear. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am more motivated by, fear of failure than I am a desire to succeed. And I don't know if that's the best approach, but it's gotten me 23 years in this business. So I will accept it. Um, I don't want to be the one to fuck it up, you know? And then you also look at the fact that, you know, I'm not, how can I put it? There haven't been a lot of black correspondents either, you know? Like, you know, you're looking before me, you got Larry Wilmore and then Jessica Williams was still one of the correspondents at the time. So you want to come in and do something that's good. And then also you're coming in on The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, not Jon Stewart. Everybody can't wait to talk shit about us because he's the man replacing the man and you're with the man replacing the man. So just, I don't know, instantly in my head, it was a desire to do well. So now it's okay. You got to start thinking of segments. You got to start thinking of stuff. You Now it's not the time to relax. Now it's the time to really fucking dig in and really figure shit out. The one thing that I did that I, in hindsight, I did not have to do. I thought that everybody at the Daily Show was some sort of amazing poly science, Rain Man level you know, like who was the state senator from Montana, 1972 through 1976? Go. Well, it was this one and this. One. 
I started trying to learn all like like I know all the presidents, but not in order. I don't know none of the vice presidents. I got hired by the Daily Show. I immediately start looking at online political science classes. <laughs> like, I, I, I must get smart. I'm not. I'm not smart enough. I don't even know all the vice presidents, and that was something I did not have to do. Your that job is to bring your good. perspective to the issues, and there's other people in it. Everybody has a strength. And together we form Voltron, or excuse me for the younger people, Power Rangers. We form a Megazord or whatever. And so that was probably the one thing I did not have to do. I was excited. I was thankful, you know, because I felt like I was at a point career wise where I felt like I was stuck in mud. So it's good to have an opportunity to at least kind of validate okay, you're doing something decent. If you're at least on their radar, you're doing yeah. something in the ballpark of what needs to be done. So that part of it was cool, but I'd say that Cubs game, that was the night of celebration. And then from then on, it was just, all right, how do I not get fired? What can I do to not get fired? Because I started doing research on all of the other previous correspondents, right? And we talk about this daily show institution and all the stars that have come from this show and her, 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 such an esteemed fucking John Stewart's tree. The roots extend throughout the cable universe. There's way more motherfuckers who didn't, who weren't able to pivot after this show. I'm just being straight up. And that's not a diss. That's not talking shit. It's about the fact that there have, There are two paths when you leave a show. Same way we talk about SNL as an institution. It's a lot of motherfuckers who left SNL. Shit didn't pop for them afterwards. Yeah, it's true. And it could be for a number of reasons. That's not a knock on any of those people or their talents. My point is, as I started really doing the research on the lineage of the show, okay, well, what has everybody before me done comedically so that I could find my own lane? You start finding out that this hit rate of people who leave and really pop it's not as high as what people purport it to be. So of course there's plenty of people, but when you look at the entire talent pool, it's, it's not as big of a percentage as people think. And so that fed the paranoia, you know, cause that's me. I'm looking for how this will go wrong and how can I avoid that? And so that became my approach. So I don't know, man, fear has a way of taking nervousness off the table for me. 